Spirit, one God, Amen. كل سنة وانتو طيبين. We reach it to the fifth Sunday of the Great Lent, so we are almost there. One more Sunday and then the Palm Sunday after. Um, today, as we heard, it's a miracle at the pool of Bethesda when our Lord Jesus Christ healed the paralytic man who had been in his infirmities for 38 years and he had no man to push him into the water when the angel uh, comes down every once in a while and stir up the water and the first man, only the first person who is able to push himself through the water uh, was healed. Today I'd like to uh, contemplate about three, only three small points. When Christ came and saw this man, he confronted him with a question, do you want to be made well? This is the first one. The second one, what this uh, miracle of the uh, pool of uh, Bethesda signifies or figures uh, or uh, beacon to a cer certain things that was going to come in the New Testament. Number three, was a warning that was given by the Lord Christ to the paralytic man who, who had been healed by Christ and he told him, sin no more, lest the worst things come upon you. The first thing our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ confronted this man saying, do you want to be made well? When Christ asks someone these questions, this means Christ conveys the fact that he possesses the power at hand to heal him. Do you want to be made well? Because I have the power to heal. But do you want to be made well? Christ was present at the pool, but we never heard that any of those sick people around the pool cried out saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. We never heard this. Even Christ performed a great miracle. A man who had been there for 38 years, all the people around the pool knew this man and knew his condition. But after Christ healed him, we never heard that any cried out, uh, uh, Jesus, son of David, heals me. We never heard about someone who was trying even to force his way, uh, his way through to touch even the hem of the garment of Christ. Christ was his healing power was present among them, yet they were looking somewhere else. And this is, could be our condition. So many times we come to church, specifically to, uh, especially to the liturgy, and we come and we pray, but we come in and go out unchanged as we came. It's very important, don't lose the opportunity. When you come to church, make sure our main goal is to see Christ, is to touch him, is to be healed by him. Christ is asking every one of us when we come to church, do you want to be made well? Yes, I do, Lord. All of us need to be healed from uh, many spiritual diseases. Um, every one uh, of us definitely have one or two or three or more spiritual diseases. And when Christ asks me this question, do you want to be made well? Because he possesses in his hand the healing power that heals the soul, we should tell him, yes, Lord. We cannot say we have no one because now we have the church, we have the servants, we have many things that can bring us uh, closer to Christ. Don't look anywhere else like those people who are around the, the, the pool. Um, the book of Isaiah says, there is no other God beside me, the Lord says by the mouth of Isaiah. There is no other God besides me, a just God and a savior. There is none beside me. Look to me and be saved. Let's come and always look to our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> the second point, what mystery does this miracle of the bull of Bethesda signifies to us? If you notice the last three Sundays, of the Great Lent has certain connection with water. The Samaritan woman, the man at the pool of Bethesda, and this coming Sunday, I'm going to speak ab about the man who was bo born blind, and he was healed when Christ ordered him to go and wash his eye in the pool of Silwam. And this relation to the water signifies 
uh, or figures, a type that shows things to come. A baptism was about to be given, possessing much power and cleansing all sins. In the Old Testament, water was used to clean and purify the stain and the dirt of the body. You will find in the Old Testament many, many, many purifications through the water. They have to wash before they do any ceremonial service. So the Lord wanted to tell them and to uh, elevate them gradually or, or let them think gradually that the, through the water, through the special grace that will be given to the water, it will give healing to the soul. So first was used to purify the dirts of the body. And then he elevated them a step higher. Give the water, as today in the pool of Siloam, a special grace that can heal the diseases of the body. So the people will be able to think that the Lord of angels, the angel who stir up the water of the pool of Siloam, the people will be able to accept that the Lord of angels can give grace to the water to purify us from sin and to give us the new nature and the new birth. So he gradually walked with them to purify the dirt of the body and to heal the diseases of the physical diseases and finally to heal the diseases of the soul. Um, there is a nice comparison between the water of the pool of Bethesda and the water of baptism. The water of the pool was moved every once in a while, maybe once or twice a year. But the water of baptism is always ready to be moved. Any time I would like to baptize anyone, the water is always ready to be moved. The water of the pool was moved only in one place. Yet the water of the baptism is moved throughout the entire world. Now in the New Testament, we have baptism through the entire world. The angel descended to move the water of the pool. Now the Holy Spirit descends to move the water of the baptism. The water of the pool healed one person at a time from his physical infirmities, a few people per year. But the baptism saves many people every day from their sins. It's not only one people at a time, but many people from their sins. At the baptism font, the sick man cannot now say, I have no man. He cannot say, while I am coming, another steps down before me. At baptism, though the whole world should come, the grace is not spent, the power is not exhausted, but remains equally great as it was before. It never exhausted. You can come, many people, whoever comes. In the day of Pentecost, we heard about St. Peter, who baptized how many people at one time? 3,000 people were baptized and united to the, the, the church, to the body of Christ on that day. It was no longer uh, uh, anyone can say, while well, I'll try to step down, somebody uh, comes and steps before me. Take your bed, take up your bed and walk. Rise for you are now cured. Take up your bed and walk to show that he, that Christ had given him an immediate and complete healing. Instant and complete healing, not a gradual one. After word Jesus find him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, you are made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto you. Now we do learn from the words of Christ that this man's disease had been produced by his sin. Sin no more. His disease was because of his sin. Similarly, our human nature was corrupted because of the sin of Adam. We inherited this sin. But Christ granted us a new nature at baptism. And he granted us this new nature immediately. And he granted this new nature fully and complete, not a grand you well. We become new once we go out from the uh, water of baptism. As St. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, all things have passed away. Behold, all things has become new. All things has become new. And St. Paul elaborates on this in the book of Hebrews and warning everyone saying, if we deliber deliberately keep on sinning, 
after we have received the knowledge of the truth, after we've been baptized, no sacrifice for sin is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Three things do you want to be made well? Every one of us should think today and should think in every mass, every liturgy we attend, yes, Lord, I am here because I want to be made well through your grace, through your body, through your communion that it changes me and that can uh, abolish any defilement of my soul. And once I always to remember that because we received this great uh, uh, grace of the sacrament of baptism, the new nature, we have to be very careful about our life not to sin and not to stay in. If we sin, we have to repent instantly, not to say, uh, not to stay in sin. May the Lord grant us all uh, his grace and power of healing. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.